So I'll talk about this trial in some detail, but first let's talk about what standard of practice is. Currently patients that come in with metastatic kidney cancer, we usually recommend surgery to remove their kidney before they go on systemic therapy for their disease. So they'll often see a urologist and then we'll do what's called a cytoreductive nephrectomy, take out the kidney and then go on um, uh, drugs such as sininib or pazopinib or immuno-oncology drug. So this trial was a randomized controlled trial comparing patients with metastatic kidney cancer going on sinitinib alone versus surgery and then sinitinib. So they had patients randomized to those two arms. And what we found was, surprisingly, that there was no difference in those patients that had surgery versus going on sinitinib versus sinitinib alone. So this is a landmark trial because it's going to be practice changing for many of us that do these surgeries and uh, see these patients with metastatic kidney cancer and they may not need surgery up front and may have delayed surgery afterwards. The patient population was more uh, intermediate and poor risk patients. So some of the favorable risk patients uh, were not randomized in the trial, but for those patients that were intermediate and poor risk, it was fairly clear that they did not benefit from having surgery and then going on sinitinib, because if you had sinitinib alone, there was no difference at all. So this will be a practice changing for many of our uh, Canadian patients. Um, and there's still some questions that need to, need to be answered for sure. Certainly those patients that are fable risk, uh, perhaps they would benefit from surgery first. So we do need to have some more details about the study uh, beyond what was presented today at ASCO 2018. Otherwise, a very uh, interesting study and practice changing for our Canadian kidney cancer patients. So the study actually kind of, you say there's no difference. It showed a slight favorability to uh, sunitinib alone. Can you explain the difference? In what it showed that there was a slight favorability to those patients that were in sininib alone versus sur surgery in sininib, but it wasn't uh, significant in terms of their statistical significance. And so we think that's basically in a non-inferiority study that those patients on sininib didn't fare better than those that had surgery versus sininib. Perhaps there's a trend though that perhaps going on sininib alone uh, would be the way to start or uh, some sort of systemic therapy. Again, what I think we have to tell our Canadian patients are is that uh, it's still in flux. Perhaps you should have surgery afterwards if you're a uh, fable risk, maybe surgery up front. Um, so it's still a lot of un unanswered questions, but we'll see how it pans out in the future. So if a, a patient it goes on another uh, systemic therapy, such as prosopinib or uh, if they have the advantage now to go on the Compassion Access trial for uh, Ipinevo, do we then follow the same guidelines as just has been kind of suggested by the Kalmana study? That's interesting. It's a great question uh, because the discussant at the, uh, after the abstract was presented suggested that we could extrapolate this to patients on pazopinib or Ipinevo or other oncology, immuno-oncology drugs that perhaps we should not do a uh, nephrectomy first and they should go on systemic therapy first and see how they go. I think it's a far stretch to extrapolate that to all patients right now. We do need the data. Right now the data on this study was patients on sinitinib alone. There was a sub-analysis suggesting that those patients on Ipinevo in other studies may also benefit from Ipinevo up front and perhaps delayed surgery depending on how things go. So for now I would say that patients on sinitinib, uh, perhaps we can consider those patients going on sinitinib alone and not do their surgery right away if they're intermediate or poor risk patients right now. It's the simple statement then really on this that generally now if you need, uh, if, you need uh, if, if it looks like you need systemic therapy uh, when you come in and uh, you are diagnosed with a, a metastatic tumor, a large tumor, is it get to systemic therapy as quick as you can and then evaluate surgery or is it uh, surgery first and then get to systemic therapy because it looks like the study suggesting don't delay. Mm -hmm. that, that's an excellent question. How is this going to translate to Canadian practice? And I think right now what happens is patients come in, they see the urologist or uro-oncologist. We usually plan to take out the kidney first and then send on to medical oncology for systemic therapy. Uh, and perhaps that will change as of today. And those patients on intermediate and poor risk, they should get to systemic therapy right away. And then we can consider delayed surgery. Again, in that intermediate and poor risk population, maybe not the fable risk. The fable risk, I think, we should still have surgery up front uh, based upon the lack of data in this trial that we saw today. Now, there are logistic questions. To get funding for any systemic therapy, these patients would then need a biopsy first. So we can't get systemic therapy without a biopsy. And that may delay things a little bit. Uh, but looking at those logistic issues, we have to try and solve those. 
Uh, but I think what we're going to see now is those patients on intermediate and poor risk will go on systemic therapy first and just to expedite the biopsy. I would also say that this data, again, it was uh, compelling because it's a randomized controlled trial, but we have some data from the IMDC database from a year ago or so, one or two years ago, suggesting that those patients that have one, uh, so have, have four, five, or six of the IMDC criteria probably shouldn't have surgery up front anyway. So this further reinforces that those patients that are intermediate and poor risk, let's try and put them on systemic therapy first, and then consider surgery depending on how things go. A patient with a, a tumor over seven and, and another site there, their attitude is get this thing out of me as quickly as you can. That's why I think it will take a while for this to translate, even though it's uh, compelling randomized control data. Right now, when I see patients that come through the door with metastatic kidney cancer, they want that kidney out right away. So we'll have to educate patients and, and physicians that the study has suggested that you're not going to do much better if you go to surgery right away if you're intermediate or poor risk. And in fact, you may do better not going to surgery right away and getting some systemic therapy inside first, right away. So I think that's where it may change uh, fairly quickly, but a lot of education needed to be given to patients and physicians about this change. One of the things that was not discussed today uh, at the uh, Carmina presentation was the uh, rate of spontaneous regression. We do have patients uh, that have about a 1-2% to rate of spontaneous regression once they take the kidney out. So there's some patients that present with metastatic kidney cancer that have low volume, uh, small pulmonary metastases um, and we should not forget about the rate of spontaneous regression in those patients where when you take the kidney out, these metastases can spontaneously just go away on their own. We think what happens is that the body's immune system overcomes these cancer cells and destroys them. So I think that's also to be considered as well, especially in the patient with low volume disease, fable risk disease, I would still uh, promote surgery for those patients, get the kidney out. Uh, and perhaps it can be that 1-2% to 2 risk of spontaneous regression, especially if the bulk of the cancer is in the kidney and the bulk of the extra uh, renal uh, disease is minimal. In this study, Carmina, the average size of the tumor was 8 centimeters and the bulk of extra renal disease was quite significant. So that's something to keep in mind. In that patient population, again, poor intermediate risk with lots of uh, tumors beyond the kidney, perhaps that patient should go on systemic therapy first. But that patient that has the main bulk of the tumor in the kidney with small volume extra renal metastases, let's get that kidney out and then see how things go afterwards.